Our speaker today, of course, is Jerry Rushfeld. And Jerry, if you would unmute yourself, we're ready to hear our morning message. Hey, thank you, Kenitha. And good morning to all of you. It's good to share together even if we can't be physically together to be able to have this opportunity to come together and I welcome that. This morning we again celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. It's an important celebration because we remember and again affirm the promises that each of us made at baptism to follow Jesus Christ and to keep his commandments which he has given us. On this particular Sunday, at the suggestion of our World Church, we also celebrate this as a day of remembrance and emphasis to help victims of world hunger. Hopefully, each of us can make some special offering to support our church's mission initiative to help to abolish poverty and to end suffering. You may have already made such an offer, offering through the ablation perhaps to the Central Avenue Center of Hope, or to some other resource that helps victims of world hunger. May we give abundantly to those efforts. To prepare now for the Lord's Supper, let's remember for a moment how the first Lord's Supper occurred. Jesus and his 12 disciples would celebrate the annual feast of the Passover. The Passover was one of the most important celebrations for the Jews. It recognized their release from the power of the Egyptian Pharaoh and thus their freedom from captivity and from slavery in Egypt. The celebration featured the Passover meal. It consisted of unleavened bread and the Passover lamb. To prepare for it, Jesus gave his disciples specific instructions for finding the location, the upper room in the home of a stranger who would help them, and for preparing the meal. And when evening had come, they would celebrate the Passover meal there together. But on this particular occasion, to share and eat the Passover meal would not fulfill all of the purpose for which Jesus had brought his disciples together. This would be the last meal they would share together before the arrest of Jesus only hours later, followed by his crucifixion and his death on the cross. At this Passover celebration, Jesus thus invited his disciples to share with him a new meal the meal that you and I this morning celebrate with bread and wine as the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Their celebration on this occasion would indeed begin by remembering God's blessings in delivering the Jews from their captivity in Egypt. But their celebration would now go far beyond remembering their delivery from captivity like the Passover meal, this celebration would begin with the Jews, that is, Jesus and his disciples. And yet its intent and purpose goes far beyond being freed from national captivity. It would call us to a new understanding and remembrance that God's movement and salvation is for all of us, that is, for all mankind. And that includes you and me today, and thus to be delivered from the captivity of our own sin. Our communion celebration here this morning, our partaking of bread and wine or grape juice or water, does not happen simply upon our own initiative or because some good intentioned people may have thought it a good idea it instead comes upon the intent and invitation of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ to you and to me. Our remembrance this morning is of a God and of a Christ whose love and care and continued purpose extends to every one of us. 
and so unlike the Passover meal that focused upon God's blessings to the Jews, this newly offered Lord's Supper comes to bless all mankind. As the scriptures tell us, to bless both Gentile and Jew. It would recognize that God's saving grace extends to every person to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. The sacramental meal, moreover, would not be simply to celebrate the release of the Jews from Egyptian bondage. It would be an offering of the body and blood of Jesus Christ himself and its invitation goes to each of us to follow Jesus Christ, to obey his commandments, to find our freedom against the bondage of sin. And with that invitation, each one of us here, you and I, are, are blessed. We are blessed by the calling to renew and continue our promises to follow Jesus Christ in our daily lives. And to express our promises, we partake of the bread and wine, the symbols of his body and blood, to always remember that sacrifice and our renewed promises to Christ. And so the Lord calls you and me to share in this meal Moreover, not just once a year, but often. Doctrine and Covenants 17, verse 22, received in the early years of our church, that is in the 1830s, tells us as follows. Quote, it is expedient that the church meet together often to partake of bread and wine in remembrance of the Lord Jesus. Close quote. Our church developed an early consensus and practice to celebrate the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday of each month with the recognition that some ge geographical areas may need a different frequency. The scripture follows with two prayers of blessing, one each for the bread and the wine. Why does the scripture tell us that, quote, it is expedient that the church meet together often to partake of bread and wine in remembrance of the Lord Jesus. We could think of a number of reasons for that invitation. We live in a world rampant with all kinds of temptations, with hate, and with greed. Each of us needs God's continuing forgiveness for our own sins and failures. We need his daily presence in our lives to help us keep the commandments that he has given us. We need the guidance and his help to love and treat every person as a neighbor, let alone to ourselves, left alone to ourselves. We fail to live the Christ life life. We need the help of Jesus Christ daily. But we also rejoice in the promises of God and Jesus Christ to give us that help as we seek and as we try, do our best to keep the commandments. We rejoice with the promise of Christ that he indeed will bless us in our determination and in our efforts to be his followers. When we strive to love God with all our hearts, might, minds, and souls, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so, May God add his mercy, his grace, and his continuing blesses, blessing to help each of us to be true to our callings as disciples of Jesus Christ. May that blessing go with us this morning and extend throughout our days to come.